Uh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into conic sections and look further into parabolas, and I'll go over example two, which is uh, in fact a problems plus example from my calculus book, which is some pretty interesting and, and advanced examples. And in this example, we'll look at paraboloid or just a 3D parabola, uh, those, those, these types of mirrors and telescopes that are often used. So let's just jump right in. Here's the example. It states, uh, let P, let the point P, which is the coordinates x1 and y1, be a point on the parabola y squared equals 4px with a focus which f uh, and the point is at p0. And here's how that graph looks like. So let alpha be the angle between the parabola and the line segment, the yeah, line segment f. P. So yeah, here is that parabola there, and this line is tangent to this parabola, and then you have this uh, this angle alpha, and then it says let the angle beta be the angle between the horizontal line y equals uh, y1, so just this straight line like that, and the parabola as in the figure. So here's the angle, and again, if you go closer here, this angle is right about there. So yeah, actually, yeah, I think this is a bit off. This needs to be right on it. And same as this, yeah, so this is, uh, the angle is about this tangent line. So yeah, I think my calculus book has the wrong uh, figure there, just a slight mistake. Yeah, like that. So we have these two angles, here's a parabola like that, y squared equals 4px. There's a focus, and then you have this angle, alpha and beta. Now we're asked to prove that alpha equals beta. Now before I get to that, I just want to go over some pointers, uh, some interesting facts about this. So thus, by principle of geometrical optics, light from a source placed at the point, uh, at the focus F, will be reflected along a line parallel to the x-axis. So when that is, yeah, once I go over the proof of this, you'll see that if you shine a light from here, it goes to here, now we have a, a horizontal line, which could be used in headlights and telescopes, etc. So this explains why paraboloids, uh, the surfaces obtained by rotating parabolas about their axis, are, uh, are used as the shape of some automobile headlights and mirrors for telescopes. So if you drive a car, they're often using these types of yeah, headlights. So you have this, if you have a line going through here, let's say you have the y-axis, and this is just rotating about it, and you get a shape like that, and this is a paraboloid. So in other words, this is just a 3D parabola, parabola. Now here's a website, hotrodhotline.com. It shows a pretty good figure of headlights, uh, low and high beam. Yeah, that's the article. Now here's a cool figure right here. Yeah, so this is a parabolic or paraboloid uh, headla headlight right here. Yes, yeah, so you have the light source inside here, and there's the focus, F. And as you can see, as it goes from here, it hits the parabola, and now it bounces off perfectly horizontal like that. Then you have this other stuff, lens or whatever uh, they use right here to make it go elsewhere. Here they have it go downwards towards the road, etc. So which is uh, quite interesting. Yeah, so here it goes horizontal like that. So this is a side view of a typical lens. Optics, light is dispersed vertically shown and horizontally not shown. Yeah, I'm not sure what they mean by horizontally. I believe that means inside the page or uh, then going into it and backwards, etc. Just think of it in 3D. Here's another website, mathedpage.org, and shows a reflector telescope that uses the same parabola, uh, paraboloid uh, concept. So here, uh, this property is, of course, the basis of many applications, headlight, headlights, flashlights, yeah, flashlights, satellite, dishes, radar, etc. And here I just quickly added the title of that article, Ge Geometry of the Parabola 2D by this author, Henry Piquidio. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So anyways, so, so for example, here's a diagram of how this works in a reflector telescope. has a cool figure right here. And it says the primary uh, mirror is parabolic, reflecting the parallel rays to the focus. The secondary flat mirror re redirects this uh, towards the eyepiece. So you have a secondary mirror there. So here's light from a celestial body, the universe, etc. It goes to here. And now because this is a parabolic curve right here, it goes right to the focus over here. And then it just goes up uh, across that. And this is set up in such a way that you have this slanted mirror like this. And it just goes across there. I guess they have multiple bouncing points across there. And then this 
Yeah, it makes it straight. I'm not sure they do that. They might even use a parabolic curve. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look into that. But this is very interesting stuff. So they use a parabolic mirror like that. So that's a cool application of this property. Yeah, where it bounces off like that. You have the same angle here. Alpha and beta equals the same. So let's go ahead and prove that theorem right there. So let's look at the solution. First of all, let's just graph that again. But this time I'm going to show you is yeah, I'm going to draw a second part like this. Let's say you have a parabola like this. This is y squared equals 4px, a horizontal uh, parabola like that here. Then you have the focus. Let's say the focus is somewhere here, and this is our at point F, P, 0. And now let's say we have a light source or whatnot just going like this, or just a line like that. And then this is a horizontal line across. That's I'll just draw this parallel, so this parallel to it. And now at this point right here, I'm just going to extend this line further out like that. And now we have, I'll draw a tangent line to this dashed line across tangent right to this point like that. Yeah, so then this angle right here is alpha like that to the tangent line. But then by symmetry, this is also alpha as well. And now what I'm going to do is just write the formula that I solved in my earlier video on the angle between two lines that intersect each other. So make sure to watch out and put that link and put that in the link in the description below. So basically recall that tan of alpha is equal to yeah, where you have two lines like that. It's just going to be equal to the slope of one of the lines, I'll call that M2, minus M1. And then it was divided by 1 plus, well, M2 times M1 or M1 times M2, like that. So make sure to watch my earlier video on this proof. And the way I solved it was I had M1 as yeah, I had M1, I'll just uh, draw that curve like this. Basically, if you have Y, X like that, then you have a line like this and a line like that. This is our line one, line two like that. This is our alpha and alpha in between. And then the slopes here was M1 and there's M and then we had M2 and M. So same thing in this case, we're gonna look at over here. So this means our L1 is gonna be across here. And I'm going to draw a slope like this. This is going to be M1, uh, and this is 1. This is just to show you the rise of our ones like that. And now this, this is, remember, this is just tangent at this point, where if you go all the way down here, I'll draw a right angle. This is uh, at this point right here. This is at X1. And then the full height of this is just Y1. Yeah, so at this point right here, we have a tangent line like that. So then this M1 is just a slope. This is going to be at y prime, or the derivative of this point like that, and that equals to, well, actually, I'll, I'll do that before. This is just a slope uh, y prime at the point x1, y1, like that. And then m2 is going to be, I'm going to put that over here. This is just m2, uh, 1, like that, just a slope. And the slope is going to be rise over 1, y1 over, well, the difference between these two. I'm going to write this as x1 minus p, that's the horizontal side, like there, write this a bit neater, y2, I mean m2. And uh, yeah, there's our m1 like that. Now this curve right here, this is going to be our beta angle, and we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, so thus we have, well we have this, uh, this formula right here, and then we need to solve for, well, m2 and m1, I will uh, solve for m2, M2 is just going to be rise over run, and we have it over here. So we have this point right here, that's M2. Is this going to be Y1 over uh, over there? Because uh, at this point here, we're going from P0 to over there. So we have rise over run, this just equals to Y1 uh, minus 0 over, now we have X1 minus P, like that. This just equals to Y1 over X1 minus P. So that's M2, so we can plug that in there, but I'll do that afterwards. And then M1, this is going to be, well, again, it's going to be the slope uh, Y prime at X. Uh, yeah, this is going to be Y prime at the point X1, uh, wait, this better, X1, Y1, like that. 
So yeah, now we know the formula y prime, I mean y squared equals to 4px. So we could just solve for this to implicit differentiation. The derivative on the left side is 2y, then y prime by chain rule. This equals the derivative on the right side, 4p, and then that's, yeah, that's it. The x just goes to 1. Just put the constants. Now we could rearrange this. We get y prime equals to, well, 4p over... Uh, 2y, this cancels to be 2, this is a 1. Now we get a 2p over y. So then at y1, we get y prime equals 2, 2p over y1, like that. We just plug that in, like that. Yeah, now that we have this, what I want to do is make a point. So that's the derivative, and that's going to be, well, m2, like, uh, I mean m1, like that. So basically make a note, uh, recall as well, I went over it before. If you had a line, this is y, this is x, let's say you had a line like this, this has an angle, uh, let's call that theta, then what we have is the slope m, I'll call this m over 1. The tangent of this, tan theta, is just going to be right, I mean it's going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's m over 1, which just equals to m. So this means in our case, because we have a line like this that's to the tangent one, so tan beta is just going to be equal to m1, which is just over there. So thus, we have tan beta equals to, yeah, equals to m1, which equals to 2p over y1, like that. So we're just going to keep this for reference for now. So now if we put this all together, I'll write this put this all together. Yeah, put this all together. We get now, we just plug in the m1 and m2. Uh, there's m2 is this y1 over uh, x1 over minus p. Inside this one, this formula right there, and we have this 2p over y1. So we get uh, tan alpha equals to, again, m2 minus m1 over 1 plus m2 uh, times by m1, again, from my earlier video to make sure to watch that. Uh, this now equals to m2 was y1 over x1 minus p, like that. And then we subtracted by m1, which is 2p over y1. And then we divide this by uh, this one, 1 plus, and now we have m2 which is again going to be y1 uh, like that over x1 minus p and then we're going to times this by well m m1 2p over y1 like that yeah so notice what we have here we have this denominator on this side is x1 minus p times by y1 and here we have x1 minus p then there's a y1 there what i'm going to do is so i'm going to get rid of this simplify this one and also combine it all in there i'm going to multiply both sides by y1 times it by x1 minus p, like that. And on the top and bottom, so we're not changing anything, y1 times x1 minus p, like that. And then multiply this inside, we get, here this is going to go to y1, I'll put this higher, y1, uh, and then put this one like that. So y1 squared, because we're going to multiply that uh, by itself, and then we have x1 over uh, x1 minus p, then there's a divide this by uh, x1 minus p, like that, and those cancel. And then there's a subtracted by this 2p, and then we have a y1 over y1 times by x1 minus p, like that. This cancels with this, all divided by. Now this cancels with the bottom one, that's the same denominator, this is x1 minus p and y1, this is just y1, x1, x1 minus p. And then we multiply it over there, we get y1, x1 minus p, and then we plus, now we this whole bottom cancels out, so y1 times 2p, like that. So then what we get on the top, we get a, well, uh, this whole thing cancels out, so we get y1 squared, and then we get a minus uh, 2p, yeah, 2p, then we're going to multiply that, that inside, x1, and now we have a negative 2p times it by this negative p we becomes plus 2p squared and again the y1's cancel like that and I'll divide this by we have this instead of multiplying this out what I'm gonna do is take out the y1 just factor that out so we get a y1 
now we have a x1 minus p, and then a plus 2p like that. And then we can uh, add these up, and then minus p plus 2p just becomes plus 1p. And also before I get to that, remember this is y1 squared. We could simplify it uh, by writing it as p and x, just because this both of these terms are in terms of p and x1. So remember, y1 squared, we know the formula is just for the parabola, just y squared equals 4px. So we could just in input y1 there. So this is the same as as writing equals to, well, 4px1. So we could replace that with it. So we could replace it by 4px1 minus 2px1 plus 2p squared. Now we have it divided by y1. Now we have a x1 plus p like that. Those add up. Now the reason I did that is so we can factor out the p now and notice what happens. So we factor out the p, we get, well, p, actually we'll factor out 2, we can factor out the 2 as well. So we could take out 2p like this, then we get a x1, actually 2 times x1, 2 times x1 because that was a 4p. Now all these 2's goes away, so we get a uh, minus x1, now we have a plus p squared like that over y1 x1 uh, plus p and now these add up 2x1 minus x1 that is just well x1 so we get equals a 2p times it by x1 plus p actually I forgot to do this we took out a p from the p squared so we get like that and I forgot to take that one out so now we get a uh, x1 plus p like that over y1 now we have over there x1 plus p and those cancel out like that this cancels out we're just left with now so now we get tan alpha equals to 2p over y1 and now remember this just equals to yeah so that whole thing tan alpha this equals a 2p over y1 which is just our m1 over here yeah, over here. So that's just our 2p over y1. So this means that this equals to m1. And m1 equals to, we already uh, showed that above, tan b. Like that. This is just tan, uh, yeah, tan beta, I mean, not tan b. So thus we have, so thus tan alpha equals tan beta. And this is only possible. Uh, yeah, it's only possible if if we get well alpha is equal to beta like that. So this is the exact same, and there's our proof. And this is just just to make a note. This is for this is for when uh, alpha is greater than or equal to zero, and we also have and we also have beta is greater than. Actually, it's less than uh, pi over two or ninety degrees. That's what I just proved it four like that so put it like that let's put a line like that so yeah there is our proof for our paraboloid or parabolic curve uh, headlamp light telescope etc where this point here so we again assume this was greater than zero and also that the beta is less than pi over two so we don't get a greater than 90 degrees etc yeah so there that is the proof of it yeah so that's all for today for you follow through this very interesting video and just to show you that some of the uh, mathematics behind telescopes and headlights or at least uh, many of these types of headlights and telescopes which is pretty cool so now you know how to make it like that if you can make your own to make it a parabolic curve and you'll see the light you can make a horizontal line like that which is quite amazing anyways thanks for watching and that's all for today and uh, like always you can download these exact notes in the link in the description below as well as uh, view these in article format on steamit and I'll, I'll be uploading it there shortly after i upload this video anyways thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math e